Hi everyone and welcome to the Persuasive Portfolio free webinar for ambitious graphic designers who want to transition to user experience design and get the job everyone wants but don't necessarily know how to ask for. So I've got a special surprise announcement at the end of the training so please stick around for that and tonight we're broadcasting live from London. So first of all I'm really excited that you could join me for this free webinar. I hope you've hidden the kids, pets, boyfriends, girlfriends, and hubby or wife away for the next hour. Feel free to grab a coffee, glass of wine, green smoothie, whatever it is you like to do to relax, because tonight we're broadcasting on one channel. So, are you tired of actually earning four figures? Because today I'm going to show you the exact steps I took to get my first $12,800 contract using the persuasive portfolio technique. But before we start, I want to share with you my most embarrassing interview that I've ever had. And I want you to see if you can guess what happened. If this is something that's ever happened to you. Hi there. Welcome. So if this is something that's ever happened to you, then we should be definitely friends forever. So one of the things that happened at my most embarrassing interview was it was a big day and I made the mistake of arriving 20 minutes early and I told my interviewer that I was in reception. Now this is something you should never do and I learned this shortly afterwards. I hadn't done my interview prep beforehand and this was a cold interview. That meant I had no contact with the interviewer before, um, before the actual session. And all I knew was they were looking for someone to head up their innovations lab. And because I was overconfident and I'd worked for the company before, I felt that I knew it all. And I didn't, pre I didn't prepare my portfolio. I didn't prepare my pitch. And well, I actually got the interviewer's name wrong. I called him Christian and his name was James. Anyway, I wanted to die. And as you can imagine, not only that, but I didn't get the job. So what the lesson of this story is, you need to over prepare for every interview session that you go to. You need to spend a lot of time finding out who you're going to meet. You need to research the company deeply. You need to find out everything you possibly can about the team you're going to be working with. You need to know the names of the people that work there. And you need to have a real, um, a real deep analysis of the role as well that you're going into. But anyway, surprisingly, I didn't get this job. But six months later, I did get this job. Uh, I did get a job at the same company in user experience design. And that's because I reached out to another team they're a very large company and I heard the other team were hiring and I applied for the job and I prepared and I got it. So you can turn around a failed interview with a company, but you need to do it carefully and you need to be prepared. So, you know, why, what keeps me going? Um, one of the things that, that keeps me going is my clients. And I've worked for some of the biggest e-commerce clients on the planet, including Netta Porter, which is a luxury fashion company, Mr. Porter, The Body Shop, Benno.co.uk. I've also worked for Bloomberg, Springer Nature, For Finance and Little Woods as a highly paid UX design consultant. So, Another thing that keeps me going is my coaching clients. And here are three of them. Um, the first one is Max. She's a Finnish graphic designer and I helped her get together her cover letter and CV for applying for jobs, even though she'd been a stay at home mom for five years. Sherilyn, I also helped by introducing her to one of the, the teams at the company where I work so that she could build rapport. And when they're looking to hire a UX designer, She's going to be first on their hiring list. Jackie, I helped build a portfolio. She'd been um, struggling with how to build a persuasive portfolio 
and after much procrastination, I helped her build a very successful portfolio, which she now uses now uses to command her print work in her local area. I'm usually focused on UX design, but I can also help graphic designers with print portfolio prep. So what also keeps me going is my family, and these are my daughters, and they are very, very sweet, and um, they, they keep me going when times are tough. Okay, so let's, let's dive into the big picture. So what exactly and where exactly does the portfolio sit within the hiring process? The portfolio sits in the hiring process within a five, really a five step process. And it's combined with link, link your, your portfolio should be backed up with a strong LinkedIn profile, a strong cover letter, a CV, and also a pitch contract. And why do all these things need to match up? When you're, high, when you're applying for jobs or applying for uh, contracts in the design world um, and the digital world, your LinkedIn cover letter, CV, portfolio and pitch contract should be aligned. And that means if you're applying for a job as a UX designer, then that's what your, that's what your LinkedIn profile needs to reflect. If a um, UX research team come to have a look at your have a look at your um, LinkedIn profile, then and you've applied for a UX research job, then your um, title within that LinkedIn profile needs to say that you've done research or that you're a UX researcher. These things need to match up because if they don't, then a hiring manager is just going to disappear very quickly because he becomes confused and he can't understand where your focus might be. Um, another great thing which, um, or another really important part of this puzzle is um, knowing, knowing what companies to follow on LinkedIn. And I'll show you why in the next slide. So, how did I actually get my first $12,000 contract? And one tactic I used, which was, I mean, I did a number of things, but this was the main thing that actually got me in contact with the company that I wanted to work for. I was very focused, and I was very focused on e-commerce companies. And the reason for that was because in my previous role as a user interface designer and graphic designer, that's where I'd added the most value to companies in the past. I'd worked for a couple of small e-commerce companies and I'd implemented some designs which had resulted in some, a big increase in sales. And that's where I could add the most value, not only to um, e-commerce owners on a smaller scale, but I figured that if I built a persuasive case study, then I could also add a great deal of value um, to big companies. And I figured, why not start at the top? So I went into LinkedIn and I found the, 10, the top 10 companies that I really wanted to work for. And I chose this one in particular as a starting point. And what I did is I followed them. On every page, um, on every company page on LinkedIn, there's a follow button on the top right hand side. You can also see who else has worked there and who else, is, who else you might be connected to who's worked there. And you can also see all the jobs listed. So down on the right hand side, in the right hand panel, you can see how you're collected, uh, connected and also the jobs available. You can also set up alerts to be alerted of any UX positions at your favorite companies. One day I saw a post on LinkedIn, and this was really because I'd been following them, from the head of UX of a really big company that I wanted to work for and they were hiring for a UX designer, and they specifically asked for applicants to get in touch directly with the head of UX. And when I saw this, I grabbed it with both hands, because this opportunity, opportunities like this didn't come, for, didn't come around very often. This was about four or five years ago. And I applied, and I realized that I had a couple of case studies in my portfolio, which I could present to them, 
because e-commerce was my niche. And this is also something that you can do too. So you can pick on a specific niche. Let's say it's publishing or finance or e-commerce. And what I'd like you to do is really focus on a specific industry and get familiar with that industry and also get familiar with the types of things that they might be looking for in, in your portfolio. So the reason you need to focus is it because it increases your chances of getting hired. If you're focused on e-commerce or focused on digital publishing or finance and your portfolio reflects one of those industries, then the hiring manager is going to have an easy time hiring you because you've got relevant experience. So on the next slide, what I'm going to show you is the $2 million Greyhound redesign case study. Now, this was a project which I completed at the beginning of early last year. I had already had a, um, I'd already been hired by a e-commerce company maybe two or three times. So I had a lot of valuable work in my portfolio at the time. And I could use that to leverage more valuable work. So, but all you need is one well-known company in your portfolio and you can leverage that to get other jobs too. So the one you're about to see today is the $2 million Greyhound case study. Just, just, I'm just gonna pause for one second and have a drink of water for one second. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to click on the redesign. Let's hope it opens. Okay, so I don't know whether you can see this, but what I've done is I've encased um, the, the case study onto my website. And this is my private portfolio website. And it's a simple WordPress site, but I've put all my praise and portfolio into one section and I've password protected most of my case studies. The reason I've done this is because most of the projects I work on don't go live immediately and you should do the same too. If you're working on um, projects that have sensitive information then I would definitely put them behind a password protected page. I have to say this hasn't stopped me getting any work. And people say, oh, when I come to your site, I want to see your work. And, you know, if I can't see your work, then I have to get in touch with you. Well, actually, I want you to get in touch with me. And because the minute you get in touch with me and ask me about um, seeing my portfolio, and the same should go for you, is it's an opportunity for you to talk to that person about your work. And that's what, and really, that's what it's code for. So if someone gets in touch with you and asks to see your portfolio, it's an invitation to talk and that's what they want to do. And that's that I would much rather have that opportunity to um, talk to someone beforehand about your work and decide what exactly what work exactly would match their needs than for to give them a password when I don't know them that well and they go in and what they see is not relevant to their needs. So you always want to be tailoring the content that you show a prospective client. Um, because it increases your chance of actually securing that client. So what you can see here is a case study and it's based on the STAR method, which is a framework that I use to present password, to present case studies. And it's an important framework because it allows you to um, frame everything in a successful way. And the STAR framework works something like this. The S, stands for the start, what you did at the start. And here you can see, this is a quick um, design of what it used to look like. And then afterwards you can see what it looked like. So it's, even though the color scheme is the same or the UI design is the same, the actual redesign is completely different. Um, the reason I can share this project with you today is because this project is live. So I always ask clients, Am I allowed to share material? Um, 
that I've worked on. And if they say yes when it's live, and then that's fine. Usually I put it out in the public domain once it's live. But this one I kept private because um, there's some there's some information in it around personas, which you know the client might still be working through. So I didn't really want to put this into the public space, but I can show prospective clients and I can also show you today. So what you did in the start, I always like to start my case study with an introduction. And you should really be putting some wow information in the introduction. So, for example, maybe some uh, examples of revenue that the company had, um, maybe the, a little bit of an outline of why you were hired, um, perhaps a little bit of um, context around the research team you worked with or the UX team or the design team. And perhaps the actual, the actual specific area of the site that you worked on. This is really important because you want to make sure that um, you're very clear about what area you worked on on the site. You might also want to put in some information around the go live date because a lot of projects that you work on might not be live. Hi, I just want to say hi to some people who've just arrived. Hi there. Okay. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Thanks for showing up. We're about yeah. half, we're about halfway through, but hopefully you, we can you can just dive in and and uh, dive in and watch out. Where are you from? New York. Oh, great! What's your name? Sonia. Oh, hi, Sonia. Nice to meet. Hi. You. Nice to meet you. Okay, so I'll just backtrack a tiny bit. So what I'm doing is I'm just showing you a case study for my portfolio. Mm -hmm. The framework that you can use too. Are you familiar with the STAR framework? The STAR framework? No. No, okay. Um, what's your background if you don't mind me asking? Well, I'm new to UX design. Um, I'm transitioning from the field of social work. All right, okay. Were you in the UX mastery? Yes. Um, oh, great, great to meet you. I really, I really wanted to talk to you actually. Yes. Yeah. Um, I had an idea for you because um, um, I was thinking with your social, back, uh, your social, um, social work background, research, mm -hmm. research, UX research would be a really good place for you to start. Mm -hmm. Is that something you considered? Yes. Um, I've applied to a few UX research positions. Yeah. Yeah. And how's Tell it? haven't really gotten a response <laughs> oh, okay so you're still applying yes okay all right so you're in new york yes you're in the center of the universe for the ux world <laughs> i'm a, trust me i'm applying everywhere i, I do okay i don't I did, okay i don't want you to apply for any more it's going to sound counterintuitive you know what i'm going to ask you to do okay you're going to go on to meetup.com mm-hmm and you're going to join the New York UX Researchers Meetup Group. Let me write that down. You said um, New York Research yeah. UX. Yeah. Research. Okay. Um, um, go to meetup.com. Yes. And type in UX new, uh, in the New York area. Yes. And there's like three or four massive groups. And one of them is the New York Researchers User Experience Group. Okay. Okay. They have a yeah. meeting like every other week, and I went, mm -hmm. and I, I went, I went, and I met loads of people in UX design. Loads of companies are hiring. Um, okay. I would go and say hi and introduce yourself and let them know who you are. Okay, I'll definitely do that. Um, yeah. I've joined. Um, I'm part of the New York UXPA group. I go, I go to their meetups, um, and I, I joined some other groups as well. So I try to go to as many meetups as I can. Yeah, yeah. because you know what? That's where you're going to get hired. You're going to find out about jobs at those meetups, and because you went in person, okay, um, you're much more likely to get hired. They're much more likely to hire someone they they know and they've met. 
Yeah. The thing is, when I go to those meetups, and yes, some of those meetups that I've gone to, um, whoever's hosting, they're currently hiring. But I'm too afraid to like go up to them and <laughs> and speak to them about the opportunities that they have open. Okay. You know, because I'm so new to the field. Okay. So, would some scripts help you? Some scripts um, you could use. Yeah, pro most probably if I can like come up with something that I can say, you know. Yeah. Okay. So um, I've actually a friend of mine's just written a um, guide to meeting people at events, and mm -hmm. what I, and what I could do is um, actually it's on my Facebook page, but uh, you can pop you can head over there afterwards and have a look. Um, she's actually written the ultimate guide to meeting people at network events. And um, anyway, we're going, to, we're going slightly off topic here, but, but I have to say the number, one thing, <laughs> the number one thing that I usually say to people who I've never met before is you can walk up to them and you literally say, hi, I don't think we've met. <laughs> yeah? yeah. And then, yeah. oh, hi, I don't think we've met. My name's Louise. And I'm not kidding. You will get into a conversation in a second like that. Right. And you can say, okay. you can use that, use that tomorrow on people you don't know. Like, mm -hmm. hi, I don't think we've met. My name's, and literally it works for everybody. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So let's carry on. Right. Where are we now? We are on the Greyhound case study. Okay. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to go back one screen. Okay. A really great way to frame your work is, is using what we call the star framework. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the S stands for start what you did in the beginning. T stands for tasks, A for audience and R stands for results. Okay. So I'm just going to put this on mute for a second. And then at um, in the in about fifteen minutes time we can go into a Q and A. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Cool. Let me just put this on. Uh, one second. Still, still trying to figure out how to use this. <laughs> right. Hang on a second. Um, can't see where it is. Have you ever been to the, um, um, is this thing that happens in London called the roundabout um, job yeah. fair? Silicon roundabout? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was thinking, I, well, I had messaged them. I'm hoping that they <laughs> um, pick me so that I can come. You, they have to like um, look at your portfolio to see, or, or whatever to see if you can come. Um, but my thing is, you know, I'm just, I don't know if they, you know, a lot of these companies are not willing to sponsor in in the UK. Oh, I, do you know what? If you're in New York, I would just stay, stick in New York and do as much as you can there because the um, the, the job there's really buoyant. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would, there's so much work there and so much opportunity. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't see where the mute button is. Anyway, never mind. We'll have a QA session in about 15 minutes. Okay, so um, the, yeah, the star. So start, task, audience, and results. So this is the way you want to be preparing um, your work for your portfolio. This is just a simple WordPress site, which you can set up. I think it was a few dollars. It wasn't expensive. Um, and if you if you've got if you know somebody that can set this up for you it won't cost you much don't pay anyone lots of money to do this it's not a huge expensive task okay so basically you can um set up set up the, i think this is called the let me see if you can find out the name of it it's called the oh doesn't say i think it's called genesis the genesis template Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically what you do is you create a page for your case study. 
and you call it, so for this example, it's called the Greyhound case study. Mm -hmm. Project that I did, and it's a redesign of the Greyhound website. I've got a before and after picture there, but this, that's just the very beginning. Here we have the intro. So I would like to start it off, like that's the S for the star, start. Start it off with an introduction about the company that you did the design for. Um, you know, really get into the details because it's all about the details. They're gonna hire you for your detailed approach. And for this particular job, I was a senior user experience designer. I was hired for one very specific part of the journey as well. And you might, this, this might also happen to you too. When you get hired by a, a user experience team, you might be hired to work on one very specific project. And for this project, I was asked to work on the e-commerce journey. So that was everything from booking a ticket to checking out a ticket and paying for a ticket. That's why it really pays to be a specialist in a certain area. So if you're looking at going into research, then I would definitely um, specialize in research. And if you're looking to go into UX design, I would mm. also either start, if you're already in digital and you're already a designer, then I would start, I would go the user interface path. Mm. If you're already a researcher, then I would definitely stay in research mm. or start in research. Okay, so I worked with the research team and the brief was to redesign the e-commerce journey for the Greyhound website. Um, so the tools that I used to do that were um, OmniGruffle Pro and Axure. Uh, those are UX design tools. Um, obviously there was a lot of sketching involved too. It's always good on your um, page to read the role, the brief tools you used, the industry that it was relating to, the challenge. That's the main thing. What, would, what did they want the outcome of this redesign to be? So, and also include the deliverables and you can include those within, within the framework too. So for this particular example, I'm gonna show you some of the personas. These again were deliverables. I didn't do the research, but what I've done here is I've included the team on the actual um, PDF, uh, sorry, on the actual case study too. It's really important that you include the team members you worked with because it makes you look like a team player and they're always, no man is an island. They want to know who you've worked with in the past, um, what your roles on the team were and how you added a considerable value. So I've also indicated here the the UI team, so that was the, the team that actually did the design. So if you're a graphic designer, um, then, then you're probably very familiar with that term. So I've included the deliverables from the whole project on here, but I didn't work on all of them. So I didn't work on the research, but I'm including them because during your, when you present this work to a potential employer, they want to know, they want to get an idea of the big picture. What deliverables were created? and how you actually worked on this specific project. So here, these are examples of personas. So um, as you can see here, if you're a researcher, this would be very interesting to you because these personas have been defined through deep research. Um, the Greyhound research team went out into the um, public space and they interviewed they did hundreds of hours of interviews. They traveled all over America and then they compiled, compiled the interviews and they also compiled, compiled all the um, research that they did and they came up with these um, seven personas. The pro and then they broke it down even further. They broke it down into a primary persona that they wanted the, the website to redesigned to address and here he is brandon the engaged striver so everything you see on this page is to do with brandon um what his travel experiences are behaviors his perceptions of the greyhound product his personality traits and, it, and all this information is used to inform the design okay what, I, what we have here is a customer journey map, and this is really important in user experience design. 
um, and it's a, it's also great for your great for your portfolio if you've got a particular customer journey map that you can share um, because it shows how the customer makes a buying decision um, I haven't actually you would have to zoom in to see some of these thoughts but basically things like what he's been thinking um, ways that you could actually help him um, this summary is done before any of the design work it's also done to inform the design work so for example how does he find Greyhound website um, does he book on or offline does he um, use Greyhound social media um, and what are his top three goals and as you can see here it says obviously to travel to see his daughter for key events um, and also to get to A to B cheaply so again this is all used to inform the design okay so this is where I worked I worked on the actual user flow through the system and also the um, setting up the site maps so again these are deliverables and they're really important to include in your project okay and here's the site map so the original site map was huge but what we did is we we um, we looked at the existing site and where the traffic was going and then we did um, an information sort of architecture analysis and then we drew up a brand new site map based on how we thought um, based on the content strategy and the research um, this is probably the third or fourth this is actually the second version of the site map um, this included the sketches and wireframes which are really important so as you can see they've got no color at all so if you're a user experience designer then you'll know that the actual color um, and the actual UI layer is the last thing to go on usually so these are just wireframes of how the search works um, that's the search on the module on the home page so that's the book a trip module so I've gone into quite fine detail about how this works because it was one of the most important areas of booking a trip. So for example, I don't know whether you can see this, you can see that when you type into a particular field, you'll get a drop down menu mm -hmm. of how it works. Um, and the way, that I re the way that I researched this is I worked with a researcher um, and we went in to have a look at the existing search system. And we also went into the research to find out about how customers want this information displayed. So this went through three or four rounds of usability testing before it was launched. Okay, so these are the early sketches that were done. If I was gonna present this again, what I would do is I would actually film the, um, the sketches in progress and I would also film the actual click through, which is a really good idea because it shows that um, you can execute from sketches and then you can actually film it and film some of the interaction even using paper and then you could host it on youtube and then you could embed it within this page it's a really cool way of showing interaction and if you if you showed me i'd be really impressed so from this sketch it was run past stakeholders and it was kind of played around with a bit um did a lot of interaction on it and then i um, presenting or oh, then I drew up these sketches on Exur. Um, these also have interaction behind them so again what I could have done is I could have um, incorporated some interaction within here and filmed it on YouTube and then put it up here just to show you playing around with it. Okay so here's another first module if you go onto the Greyhound website after this and have a look at it you can see how some of these modules actually work and interact I use Greyhound often, so the website has definitely improved. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, my God, that's so funny. <laughs> so, um, like, what's, uh, what's your biggest takeaway from the new design? Um, I think you made the user experience much more better, more, um, more detailed as, as far as you know, making it easier for them to book their trip. Yeah. Um, 
also to see um, an actual map of, okay, what route they're taking and more yeah. making it more visual, yeah. you know? Yeah. That's so funny. I can't believe you used it. Yeah, I use Greyhound all the time. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you know what? If I lived in the States, I would too. It's an amazing way to get around. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, you can see that you can kind of see the detail that went into it. Mm -hmm. um, the research on this project took around six months, I think, to compile. So it was, mm -hmm. it was a huge job. Um, the uh, See, I know in New York there are many design agencies. So if you were, if you were looking for a job as a researcher, I would definitely um, go to these meetups and start talking to people that work in UX design agencies and they specialize in that because you what you'll find there is um, people with really highly developed research skills and they're the people you want to be learning from okay you don't really want to be starting at a startup right you're right about that yeah you want to be working for um, you know team teams that are really experienced that you can learn a lot from and if you work for a highly specialized UX design agency then I you know that would definitely be somewhere for you to start learning okay so like you said here going, paying for tickets we decided to incorporate some definitely some mapping because they weren't making use of any mapping on the old site right um, also places where you could pay for your tickets and also exactly how you could find those places um, yeah. On the confirmation page, we wanted to add a bit of fun into it. We wanted to add, you know, like Greyhound top 10 movies, um, maybe about things you could do when you got to where you were going, um, map your trip, map your trip, mm -hmm. things you could share on social media. Again, this is all the design side. Here you go. There's your mapping your journey, um, all the stops on the way, all the things you could eat on the way, if there were any pit stops where you could get something to eat. Oh, that's good to know. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> is there any journey that you do particularly more than often and more often than not huh are there any journeys that you do from new york to um anywhere in particular um i go i travel to atlanta georgia often yeah okay that's cool uh, on here it also tells you like of all the different types of stops they've got curb stops partner stations and greyhound stations um, mm -hmm. It also tells you how to get to and from bus stops. Um, we were also thinking about inc incorporating things that um, customers might find useful, you know, for example, like Uber and where to get cabs. and. Oh, yes, definitely useful. All kinds of stuff like that. Okay. But I find that most of the stations um, have cabs waiting out front. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. So things to do on the bus. Again, this was the um, confirmation page. So things you might like to do. So you could hook this up to, you know, Amazon bestsellers or um, Netflix movies, um, music, free games, all that kind of thing. Um, and also the, the Greyhound Inst Instagram account. Um, if you tag it, I think it's Go Greyhound. You'll see some really beautiful photographs of America. That was that was being very underutilized. So we decided to bring that into the application too. Um, okay. Here you can see the confirmation page. As you can see, it's all about detail. Yeah. So when you're presenting your case studies, I want to see all this. And I want to see everything. I want to see the research. I want to see the design. I want to see how you um, build your case study. So part of the STAR method is what you did at the start, um, what the ta what tasks you did, um, what the result. Um, yeah, S T A R. Yeah, what the result. Who the audience was. What the results were. Now. It's funny because I haven't actually been able to get too many of the results. Um, there's also on here, there's um, an interaction design. So I worked on the interaction design for this. Um, there is a high fidelity UX. Let me see if it's open. Oh yeah, there is a PDF in here, okay. So if you want to include any interaction design um, on the pages that you worked on, that's really important. I, I'll just show you the, from page one. So for example, here, these are notes for the developer. 
how he's going to go and take these designs and, and how and how he's going to actually work on the development side and how all these buttons are going to interact with each other. So that's okay. quite important to include. Okay. Okay. okay, so results. This is an interesting one. So the company that owns Greyhound, they only release their quarterly, I think they release their um, results like once a year. And on the last, um, the last set of results that I saw, they, they hadn't actually released any results from the website. So I'm going to have to wait another six months to find out what they are. But from the early analysis that I've done, the website is about 25% um, more stable than it used to be because it used to crash a lot. Um, with 18 million transactions a year, that's a lot of money saved and a lot of money gained. So these are the kinds of little things that you need to be looking out for in the public domain. Um, you know, what their quarterly results are and things like that. So um, that's just a little bit of information around or a, a pretty big framework that you can use for your own portfolio. Okay, so back to the slides, right. So the next one. Okay, so I've got a special surprise announcement today. Um, for, you, for you making it all the way to the end, um, I've got a special program coming up, 90 minute workshop, and it's in, interactive, and it's called the 12K UX Design Contract. And basically I'm going to run through basically how to become a LinkedIn all star so that hiring managers can't possibly ignore you. And I'm going to show you my profile and the exact profile um, around why I'm, I'm constantly in work and how I get hired. Um, I'm also going to show you how to align your CV and cover letter and portfolio um, so that, um, and also what it really means when, they say to you, you need five years of experience and a PhD in analytics to apply for a junior UX position. So I mean, I'm sure you've seen that a lot. Oh yes, a whole lot. Yeah. Okay, that's why you need to go out and meet people because um, you're not going to get hired. From the computer, yeah. I'm not going to get hired from sending my resume out. No. Um, you can definitely take your resume out with you when you go networking. But I would um, spend more time getting to know people, especially at the meetup and especially the organizer, because the organizer is going to be the one who knows everybody. Um, also, what I found on the meetups is you get, if once you get on their mail list, they start sending you jobs, like job, uh, job openings. So, yeah, I get, yeah, from the New York UXPA group that I'm part of, I get um, email jobs and stuff. Okay, cool. If you're um, a researcher, I would definitely go join the research one. Okay. I think they got they had a meeting last night. I think they have one every every month, um, and their talk okay. is really great, and it's full of other researchers. Okay. Okay. The other way to get in on your say is to job shadow. I don't know whether that's something you're familiar with. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you need to know people before you can ask them. And the way you get to know them is at networking do is by keeping in touch. Right, right. Yeah. I'm definitely going to try to look into something like that. Yeah, so go and make friends first. That's the main thing. Go make as many friends as you can and just keep going and keep showing up. Yeah. Yeah, that's the main mm. thing. You're right, you're right. Okay, so um, that's the... So basically what I'm going to do after this session is um, email email this out to you and then you can get on my VIP list. I've only got six places um, and mm -hmm. I'll, be, I'll be announcing when this launches in about um, a week or two. Okay. Um, so we've got like 10 minutes left and I know we've got a couple of other participants here but they haven't, um, I, I'm not sure who, who they are, they haven't really let themselves be known so um, I'm opening the floor to questions if anyone has any questions. Please fire away. <laughs> um, I don't know. I like this um, presentation, though. It was very informative. I like to, um, to see all the steps that you took. Yeah. Um, in regards to creating this. So it was very detailed, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so um, what, 
what, what made you want to go into research design? Well, um, I really didn't want to go into the research, research part. I wanted to go, you know, be like a junior UX designer, you know, go yeah. into something like that. Yeah. Um, I like what I like about it is the group effort, the coming up with new ideas. Um, yeah. That's what draws me, you know, the creativity and also the, the great, um, you know, work life balance, you know, when I was a social worker, you know, it, um, life work balance was something <laughs> very difficult. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what's the, um, what's your biggest takeaway from today? Um, my biggest takeaway was, you know, whatever, um, project I'm, you know, as far as my portfolio is to try to be as detailed as possible and to demonstrate my, um, my design process. Mm -hmm. I don't think my, on my portfolio that it's not as defined as I would like, you know, in regards to my design process. Um, so I'm just working on that. <laughs> okay. Do you have any research in your portfolio? Do I have any what? Any research? Um, the only project was the, um, that I, that I did a little research on was, um, the task manager, um, assignment that I had. Um, did you share your portfolio with me in the, um, any, on the UX mastery webs? Um, yes, you said I was, you said I was next. I don't, I don't know if you um, got a chance oh, to see it. Okay. Let me have a look. Let's have a look. Um, let me see. That was was that in the forum? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's have a look. So. Okay. your name on here? Sonia. Sorry? Yeah, Sonia. Sonia. Yes. Yeah, right there. Um. Is this your website? Oh, this is you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Right. Sonia Anthony. S O N. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's open it up. S O N. Is it twenty five? Um the the um the website is um yes sun twenty five. Yeah. Anthony. Anthony. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um dot myportfolio dot com. Okay. Okay. Task task manager, is that one of your Uh-huh. That's the one that has more stuff on it. Like I did a lot with that one. I have user personas. Yeah. Okay, what was and what was the application? Um, it's basically like an app or a website for like, if you're trying to manage your project, manage your team yeah. and, um, something like that. So you can keep track of your projects, communicate with your team. Yeah. Um, I thought it would be nice to have Skype, um, on it as well. So that when it comes to having meetings with your team, yeah. it'd be easier to communicate about your project, you know? So... Okay, cool. And was Erica, is, is Erica a real person? No. Okay. Well, so you know, I gave it a, I just made okay. up a name. That's cool. Okay, so this is really cool. So what you're doing is you're copying, okay, which is good. It's the best way to learn. This is how everybody learns. They just copy. So if you were going to do this in, in real life, um, you would be obviously talking to real people. 
Mm -hmm. So what you could actually do or, or, or um, what you could, what you could do is like, you could do a test like this, but the main thing is, is like what you want to do is define what you want the outcome to be. Mm -hmm. so, um, what did you want the outcome of this testing to be? Because at the beginning of a test, you always need a hypothesis. And what you're mm -hmm. doing is you're, you are either um, validating the hypothesis or unvalidating it, if that makes, invalidating it. Does that make sense? Right. Um, I, um, part of my assignment, um, I did have to go out and ask people. I created a little questionnaire to see um, what people found useful. What could That's they... Right. You know, that's yeah. great. Um, and who who gave you the um, assignment? Um, I, I I didn't complete the course, but I was taking a course through Career Foundry in UX oh, and Design. Really? Oh my god, that's great! And that and who were Career Foundry? Huh? Who were Career Foundry? Um, they give you assignments. So you have assignments and you meet with your mentor once a week to discuss the assignment. Ah, right. Okay. That's cool. And um, is that in New York, Career Foundry? Well, actually, Career Foundry is um, located in Berlin. It's an online program. Ah, right. Okay. And did they have a research um, arm? Did they have a research part of this? Um, yeah, I had to research competitors and yeah and compare and contrast and and do that and i had to you know go out and and you know um i forget which sites i use um yeah i think i use survey monkey monkey to create a survey and yeah and i even okay. though i i um okay, it was so mostly my class that's brilliant so um i think it's okay you did cut oh cool you did You've got a closed, closed card sort. Open card sort. Okay. Beginning of a user flow. Okay. Do you know what? This is great. This is really great. I think you should start. I but I I think you should start networking. You know, you've made so much effort. You've got your website. You've got projects even though uh, tasks from a course that you've done, I would literally, mm -hmm. I would literally spend the next three months networking, networking and, okay. going out and saying hi and meeting people and saying, right. hi, hi, my name's Sonia. I don't think we've met. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You're right. I got to, I got to put myself out there. I, um, I, or I got business cards now, so I, I need to get out there. Okay, great. Um, because if I was in New York, I, I like I would not stay indoors. I would be out every day, just like at every single event, meeting yes. everyone, meeting everyone that I could. Because often, at, right. often at these meetups, they have um, they they have a talk. Someone's there doing a talk, or they have a panel. Right. And right. They do. And then afterwards, they the these people, these panel members, usually they have, they they work in big design agencies. Um, there was yes, a I went to one at BuzzFeed. At BuzzFeed? Yes. <laughs> well, that's cool. They're a massive company. You see that that's the kind of company yeah. you want to get your foot in the door at. Yes, yeah. exactly. All right. Okay, so we've got one minute left. Okay. Any more questions from the floor? So overall, what do you think of my portfolio? Okay. So, okay. I think it's a good start. Okay. And I think you're way more organized than most people because you've already done a course. Um, let's see. Now that one, <laughs> that was just some uh, uh, idea that I, you, oh, I thought you was clicking on this other project, but that was an idea I had for my personal portfolio, those other projects. Oh, I like this. Is this your CV? Yes, it is. That's nice. That's a nice design. Okay. Right. So, um, let's say you went to a networking event. Mm -hmm. This, this is this is good enough. Okay, this is good enough for your level, your portfolio. Okay. 
but I'm going to try and steer you away from the portfolio now. Okay. Out to meeting people. So okay. In the last 60 seconds, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest that um, when you go to talk to people at meetup events, you say, you know, hi, hi, we haven't met. My name is Sonia. You know, I'm currently looking for job shadow opportunities with the UX researcher. Um, do you know, yeah. could you recommend anyone? And they might yeah. say, oh, I'm a researcher. And, you know, why don't, why don't we talk or blah, blah, blah. Okay. But they're not going to say that unless you ask. Okay. So practice saying it in front of a mirror. <laughs> do whatever you want. Just practice saying it over and over again. Right. And go out and, uh, and start talking to people. Okay. I am. I'm going to put more effort into it and I'm yeah. not going to shy away. Because no, tinkering around on your portfolio is not going to get you work. It's right. not going to get you a job shadow opportunity, which is what you need right now. So okay. To get some real projects in your, in your book. So, okay yeah okay well, Sonia it was lovely to meet you and so you're so clever for finding a me <laughs> <laughs> yes okay this, cool. is, this was you know been a, it, this has been a journey but I'm, I'm you know sometimes it gets hard but you know I am determined to stick to it <laughs> great job okay yeah. all right we'll hope to see you again soon okay Thanks again. Uh -huh.